Happy Friday, television family. If you stand on your tiptoes, you can see the weekend from here. And right now, it's a beautiful Friday morning, 10th day of November 2023. I am Dan Coons, 36 degrees, gobs of good, good sunshine today. This is going to be the last really nice day. Temperatures slightly above normal. It was a raw day yesterday. It never really warmed up at all. We only got to 42. We spent our day in the Bavarian village of Leavenworth, and I don't think it ever got out of the 30s. It was a Pretty raw day to lots of rain in the evening hours, but we're in for a very nice day today. Then big changes tomorrow. Wind advisory, some rain. It's going to be a very blustery Veterans Day uh, for the parade tomorrow. Sorry, nothing we can do about it, but I'll give you your weather details in just a couple of minutes. Plus news, including the latest numbers from the auditor's office. They had another vote dump yesterday. They're closed today, and they won't have another vote dump until November 20th. So for a few candidates, it's going to be Wait and see. So the latest numbers from the general election coming up. The uh, Seattle Kraken pulled one out of the very, very end. Congratulations to the Manson Trojan girls volleyball team, state champions. We'll talk about that in sports. That's pretty cool. And uh, we wanted to replay the interview I did with Dory Foster, the CEO of the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. They are now fully into their campaign to build a brand new YMCA, where the old Chelan PUD headquarters is. It's the Building What Matters campaign. We need it. Would they need a new facility? They badly need a new facility. A friendly reminder from Dory Foster and what you can do to help them out. And they deserve it just two minutes after the hour. We got some spectacular footage this morning, if, uh, if it holds true from what we looked at a couple minutes ago. From our Wenatchee Heights camera, giving East Wenatchee all the love today. And why not? You can see a few low-hanging clouds. Well, the Wenatchee River meets the Columbia on the far left, and you can see the sun just kissing Birch Mountain and Badger Mountain getting up there. With sunrise uh, about now, 6.58. Sunset tonight, 4.31. Nine hours and 33 minutes of daylight. We're at that point of the year now. We're going to lose about 45 seconds of daylight instead of like two and a half minutes of daylight, which is what we were, we were losing just a couple of weeks ago. 47 is our normal high temperature. We didn't get there today. We'll be there close today, but there's a wind advisory in effect for all day tomorrow. Heads up on that. The Omi Garden camera. Take a look at this. Isn't that cool? Turning around, looking the other way. Now you can see the sun just kissing up the Clockham Way in Mission Ridge. Uh, what a stunning view there. And look at the clouds. Some of that might actually be a little bit of haze and smoke if you have like a, your fireplace up and running. That's just great from the Omi Gardens camera. And this one has got to be, look at that. That's from uh, high atop the Apple Annie's Antique Mall and that ridge high above that overlooking Cashmere. Look at that spectacular view. Good morning, Cashmere. That is just stunning. Everybody's in for sunshine today and the wind isn't coming to tomorrow. I could just look at that all day. Grab a cup of coffee and just stare at that. But Billy Goat won't let us down. Never does. Good morning. You can make out the Columbia River and the Medhow, Alta Lake in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. They obviously have a few more clouds up there, but it will get scoured up. Uh, weather, for the most part, for the next seven days is going to be pretty unsettled, with the exception of today. But something I really wanted to touch on is the wind advisory. This is an updated slide from yesterday. Wind advisory starts at 7 a.m. tomorrow, goes until 7 o'clock on Saturday. And tomorrow, Veterans Day is going to start out with rain. And we're going to have rain till about noon or so, and then the sun will come out as this system barrels through, but very strong winds. In the morning, sustained winds 10 to 15 miles an hour. By the time we get to the afternoon, closer to 30 miles an hour. Gusts near 40 at times late tomorrow afternoon. And on top of that, rain, off and on rain showers. So we're in for a whole bunch of weather, a weather smorgasbord coming your way tomorrow for Veterans Day, but we're not there yet. Today, sunshine for the most part, passing clouds here and there. Certainly a lot warmer with a high of 48, near 50 in many locations after that 43 degree high yesterday. Slight chance of some light rain tonight, uh, basically in the very early morning hours before the sun comes up. We'll get down to right around 36 or so. And then again, we get it all on Veterans Day. Very windy. Some rain, off and on intermittent rain showers, uh, some sun breaks, warmer temperatures, uh, very strong winds, especially in the afternoons, but it's going to be windy in the morning, too. So if you're going to go to the Veterans Day Parade, again, starts about 1045 or so at the Wells Fargo parking lot. They'll come down Chelan, south on Chelan. They'll stop at Memorial Park at 1111 in the morning. They do their traditional 
a salute to the troops, and then they'll head down a rondo and then back down Mission towards the Wells Fargo parking lot. You're going to want to bundle up, folks. It can be very inclement weather. And then things calm down Sunday with a high of 45, but then we go we hit and miss showers, some sun, some rain, a little bit of everything. It is, after all, mid-November now, and we have already had three quarters of an inch of rain this month just on the nine days that's in the books. That's been a lot of rain, and there's more coming. So dig out your bumper shoot, grab a cup of coffee, and come back and see me. We'll do the news. You're watching a Friday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in health care that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. It's the music that revolutionized the sound of Christmas. Mannheim Steamroller Christmas by Chip Davis. Celebrating the holiday spirit for over 35 years. Don't miss this holiday extravaganza. Mannheim Steamroller Christmas by Chip Davis. America's favorite Christmas tradition. Saloon and Casino has the best Vegas-style games in East Wenatchee. Come enjoy yourself and discover the nightly action. Win big and meet new friends at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino. In today's environment, risk management assessment is a crucial process for your business. Risk assessment will identify, evaluate, and mitigate hazards. Don't let risk impact your business income, reputation, operations, and your overall success. We can give you peace of mind by transferring your business risks to the insurance providers. Call Stacy at August Edge Insurance today to schedule a risk management assessment for your business. Is one nice sunset going on right now. We'll have quite a bit of sunshine today. Highs will be in the upper 40s. A lot of wind and a lot of rain coming your way on Veterans Day and then a pretty benign Sunday. At eight minutes after the hour, here we go. Count of new ballots uh, were released yesterday afternoon and it will be a cliffhanger in the most closely watched race for the Wenatchee School Board. Just 40 votes separate the incumbent, the president of the Wenatchee School Board, Maria Iniguez, from her challenger, Randy Smith, operator of the Wenatchee Valley Cross and a vocal opponent of diversity in Wenatchee schools. That's less than a 1.1% difference. How many votes yet to be counted in District 2? We think about 300, and we won't know until November 20th. Another incumbent, Martin Barron, he's going to retain his two-year seat on the board. Newcomer Miranda Skaliski, by the way, will take over an open seat. And in the mayor's races, Mike Poyer will be the next mayor of Wenatchee as an insurmountable lead over two-time candidate Brian Campbell with 61.9% of the vote. Chelan's going to have a new mayor, Aaron McCardle, notching a 51% share to take over from incumbent Bob Getty. Waterville will get a new mayor, Lloyd Smith, 60% of the vote there. And Leavenworth Mayor Carl Floria, he strengthened his lead to continue to steer the folks in Leavenworth. Carl Floria has a 58.8% of the vote over Rich Brinkman. A bank teller in Chelan on Thursday handed over some cash to a man carrying an unidentified electronic device who approached the counter and said, I'm robbing the joint. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office says the suspect walked into the Wafed branch on East Johnson Avenue in Chelan at about 10 in the morning, carrying a piece of electronics, told the clerk, quote, this is a robbery, end quote. He fled on foot with the money, but the deputies were able to identify the man. They tracked him to a residence in the 400 block of East Wooden Avenue. He's identified as Michael Francis Kohenen, age 34. He's uh, previously, uh, he had previous criminal connection, uh, convictions in Chelan and Yakima counties. 
Police say they also recovered the money he allegedly took in the robbery. Kohannon was booked into the Chelan County Jail shortly after 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Charges including second-degree robbery and theft. Police have now asked for formal charges against that one H.E. man accused of ramming a couple of police vehicles with his own vehicle, attempting to avoid arrest. This was on November 1st, of course. 37-year-old Stephen A. Erland allegedly throwing his SUV into reverse, collided with vehicles used by the Columbia River Drug Task Force. They had located Erland in a Rock Island residence. Police say inside his vehicle they found a stolen e-bike, a pistol grip shotgun, an AR-15, and approximately 1,000 fentanyl pills, among others. Ireland was sought on warrants, charging him with violating a court order and fleeing from previous police traffic stops. He's still in the Chelan County Jail. The task force on Wednesday asked for new charges, including assault, hit and run, resisting arrest, unlawful firearms possession, and multiple counts of drug possession with intent to deliver. Douglas County prosecutors have until Monday to file formal charges there. The city of East Wenatchee says a major road improvement on Grant Road and East Mon and High Line is getting near the finish line. All the lanes on Grant Road and High Line Drive are now open and they're being controlled once again by traffic lights. But this is important. Eastmont Avenue will remain closed at the Grant Road intersection until at least tomorrow evening. And public works officials say if there's rain or other inclement weather, and there is rain in the forecast, that could delay the opening further. It's a $6 million transportation project, significant upgrades to the pavement, the sidewalk, the ramps, and stormwater drainage. Leaders in STEM gathered Wednesday at the Wenatchee Convention Center for their annual Innovators Award. They've been doing this for 22 years now, the luncheon. NCW Tech Alliance took uh, the time to welcome newcomer Dr. Sue Kane into her new role. She's taking over the leadership from former executive Jenny Rojasacin, who led the organization for eight years. Six different awards were given out to both individuals and businesses, including Wenatchee School District's Ron Brown. He won the Lifetime Achievement Award. And Quincy School District's Mark Ross Kondo was the STEM champion of the year. Jonathan Baker of Equipped was awarded Entrepreneur of the Year, and Innovate.ag took home the Newcomer in Technology Award. And finally, students also recognized for their work, including Future Leader in Technology Award winner Natalie Vasquez Roca of Chelan High School, and STEM College Innovator Award winners Titus Peterson and Sitali Cruz, both graduates from schools in our area. And that's what's making news on this Friday. One more newscast before we can begin a weekend, and it has been a very busy week. It's election week. It's always busy in the bullpen, but we'll cobble together a newscast for you because we think it's important that uh, you know what's going on in the Wenatchee Valley in North Central Washington. So watch the news at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock on TV. 5, 6, and 10. That doesn't work. It'll be up and running on our homepage, ncwlife.com, on our YouTube page, and on our Facebook page. And now I have four fingers and uh, if you see something out there that you think we need to know about, let us know about it. Send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. Sports, the obscure holiday today in history, some celebrity birthdays, an opinion from my mad dog, McNaughty, and we're going to talk to Dory Foster from the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. It's all coming up. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think I'll sell my veggies at the market. Do you even remember to water the house plants? I do this? You can do this. Hey, we need to build a home office. We We're adding another bathroom. I think I'll study programming. Bro, you even connect your phone to Bluetooth. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank, privately owned, locally invested. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, family owned and operated on North Wenatchee Avenue, right next to Hooked on Toys. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue uses only fresh ingredients handcrafted with love, including authentic Hawaiian barbecue and Japanese style ramen noodle soups. And the bubble teas will keep you coming back for more. Enjoy the culinary tour of the Pacific Rim with Hawaiian barbecue lunches and combo plate classics as well as ramen noodle soups. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue. Enjoy their comfort food like you're one of the family.
after the hour, the Manson Trojan girls volleyball team has been very good for a very long time, but they finally got the big prize. A state championship. They swept three sets from Lind Ritzville Sprague last night at the Sun Dome in Yakima to win their first ever state championship. And if you want to know what it looks like when a high school volleyball team wins a state championship, it looks something like this. The Manson Trojans, state 2B girls volleyball champions. Way to go. Okanagan, by the way, they finished sixth. They lost to Adna yesterday in straight sets. And he had Waterville, Mansfield. They had their seasons come to an end yesterday morning in the consolation bracket of the state 1B tournament. The Tigers losing to St. John Endicott Lacrosse, three sets to one, and the Shockers swept by Northport. And now it's time for the state 1A and 2A tournaments. They begin and get going over the next couple of days. Chelan. They're looking to repeat as the state 1A champion. They start out with Montesano this morning at 10:45, and number 11 Afreda will take on number six Ridgefield in the 2A tournament at 10:45, and number three Ellensburg will play number 14 Washington at the same time. Two girls soccer teams from our area still alive in the state tournament. Okanagan is on the road. They'll take uh, on Kalama tomorrow at 12:30 in the quarterfinals of the state 1B 2B tournament, and in state 1A soccer, Kashmir will host La Center in the quarterfinals. That's the state 1A tournament that will be at Vail Elementary School tomorrow morning at 1 o'clock. And the first round of state football gets underway this afternoon. Brewster, they're going to be on the road uh, heading down Highway 97 to Goldendale, 1 o'clock kickoff this afternoon. The winner will take on Okanagan in the quarterfinals, either Friday or Saturday. And Cashmere football team looks to continue their undefeated season tonight. They'll host Toppenish first round of the state 1A tournament. Kickoff for uh, Cashmere and Toppenish. Toppenish is at 6 o'clock tonight. OMAC, by the way, is on the road in the first round at La Center. If you need some eight-man football in your diet, Lions Field and Moses Lake will be the place tomorrow. The first round of the state 1B tournament. Almira Cooley Hardline will take on Concrete at 1 o'clock. And Liberty Bell has a first round bye. They await the winner between Darrington and Wellpinet next Friday or Saturday. Two-way football, Afreda begins their quest for a championship. They're on the road at North Kitsap tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Othello has a first-round game at Enumclaw tomorrow, also at 1 o'clock. The Wenatchee Wild look, look to extend their current eight-game winning streak tonight. They are in Alberta. I'm sorry, that's uh, tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, they'll take on Lethbridge, the Hurricanes, tonight at 5 o'clock, and then Medicine Hat tomorrow at 5. Austin Friday will call it if you want to listen to the game on 560 KPQ. And speaking of hockey... The Seattle Kraken stopped snapping a two-game losing streak, a dramatic 4-3 win at Colorado last night. Jaden Schwartz gave Seattle the early lead in the first period in a game that was a rematch of the Western Conference semis from a season ago. The Avs would come back to tie it, and then Oliver Borkstrand, the hero, at the very, very end. Under a minute 30 to go here. Cartier's back in. Branson had lost his twig. Shot score. Jaden Schwartz saw a tiny sliver of opening and he fired it right there to give the Kraken a 1-0 lead. For Schwartz, that's his seventh of the year. He was on a heater of his own here with a seven-game point streak, make it eight. When Mikko Rantanen loses his stick, he has kind of lost focus just for a split second as Rantanen goes to pick that up. The shot right through the screen. This is the transition game for the Kraken, Bjorkstrand. Took a hit, Alexiak into the slot with it, shot, score! The return pass to Bjorkstrand, and the Kraken have taken a 2-0 lead. Again, the Abs, a little bit disjointed in their own end, and for Bjorkstrand, that's his fifth of the year. And Such a strange play, watch right here, Lekkonen comes across, it kind of holds up on the hit. Then Bjorkstrand gets back up, and somehow that puck comes right to him off a pass from his teammate, right there! you think both players would be out, but Bjorkstrand steps right up. McKinnon actually whacks the back of his stick as he's coming down. Watch McKinnon right here. He actually gets good lumber on Bjorkstrand. No penalty on McKinnon for slashing either. 
The only assist comes from Alexiak and a little give and go of Bjorkstrand. Now it's McKinnon. Fly here, Nathan McKinnon gives it up. Byram shoots and scores! Bowen Byram top shelf! And the Avs have cut the gap. It's now a 2-1 game. Here comes Beniers through center ice. The crack in this season have given up two shorthanded goals. The Avs are tied for tops in the NHL in shorthanded goals. Scored with four. Philly and Carolina right there with them as Beneers walks in and shoots and scores. Matty Beneers. That's his first goal of the season, and this is 14th game. And the Kraken with a power play goal have made it 3-1. Philip Grubauer knows that particular routine. He stopped it in practice an awful lot. Sent down deep. McKinnon turns it back and he scores. And they needed that one desperately. Well, we talk about hockey IQ, and this is putting it on the Einstein level because Kill McCart gets it back to the point. He doesn't panic, but he sees McKinnon on the far side. And McKinnon, he's got time and space. So instead of just stuffing it and trying to deflect it, he backs up, gets his head up right here. Grubauer's back in his net and just throws it in the left side. Tremendous save by Grubauer. He actually moved his leg. He must have picked it up at the last second through a screen of about four guys. Here's McKinnon wide open. Sends it up top. One-timer. Scott! Mm -hmm. Less than a minute to go here. Head off for Larson. Kraken are a desperate bunch as well. Bjorkstrand wants to reverse direction. Game it up shot. Shane Presbytus score. I can't believe it. Oliver Bjorkstrand. Far shot of the crease. The puck goes right to him for his second of the game. And with 31.6 left, the Kraken have gone on top 4-3. Here's McKinnon. Gives it up. That shot. Broken stick on Colton. McCarr shoots. Hit a body. And that's going to do it. For bad luck, sometimes the abs wouldn't have any luck at all. That's a fun way to win. Philip Grubauer, by the way, really good. He stopped 21 to 23 shots. Seattle returns home. They'll host Edmonton tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on Root Sports Northwest. All right, let me tell you about the college football. Central Washington University wraps up their regular season. They are undefeated in league, by the way. They'll be at number 17, Texas Permian Basin, tomorrow at noon, 12 o'clock. Also the time between Eastern Washington in Montana State, that will be in Bozeman. Weather's going to be nice. Sunshine, temperatures in the upper 40s there. Fifth-ranked Washington facing yet another tough challenge in Pac-12 play. Utah, number 18 Utah. At Husky Stadium, sold out. National audience, Fox, 1230 kickoff there. And the Cougars are trying to stop their five-game losing streak. They'll be in Berkeley to take on Cal, 1 o'clock on ESPN2. And the Seahawks looking to back, bounce back from that terrible game against Baltimore. We got the Commanders coming to town Sunday at Lumen Field. Kickoff is set for 125 on Fox. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this uh, 10th day of November. Today is National Forget Me Not Day, and it should remind people that after World War I, the supposed war, to end all wars, when the veterans came back overseas, from kicking the Kaiser's butt, there is zero support system, nothing, not even for wounded veterans. And so a couple of people got together and said, this ain't right. They created Forget-Me-Not Day. Uh, Forget-Me-Nots, of course, are wildflowers. They're fairly prevalent. But the idea is, uh, is for Forget-Me-Not Days, uh, you associated symbolism, either the memory of loved ones who lost their lives in World War I or those who were wounded. And because there was no support system whatsoever. It was like, thanks for winning. You can go back to your jobs now. And they, they had the bonus money, but they said you're not going to get that for about 20 years. Um, so that might be the most ultimate legacy of all because World War I accomplished nothing. We went right back to war again, of course, uh, a few years later. Um, but there was no absolutely zero support system for America's veterans coming home from World War I. None. Now, of course, there's all kinds of of uh, government entities and non-government entities that help our veterans, wounded or not, even those who didn't even fight in a war, but not in World War I. It was like, thanks, no organizations to help them out. So forget me not day was created so people could remember the people who died or damn near did in World War I. Still, I don't know why it still ticks me off, but it does.
26 minutes after the hour today in history. Happy birthday to the Marines. <clears throat> the Marine Corps is 248 years old, November 10th, 1775, at the Tund Tavern in Philadelphia. Sam Nichols was the guy who put it all together. This is according to tradition, November 10th, 1775. The Second Continental Congress commissioned the innkeeper, Sam Nichols, the innkeeper at the Tun Tavern to get together a bunch of folks and create a Marine Corps, two battalions of Marines. The tavern's manager, Bob Mullen, was the chief Marine recruiter, and apparently Bob and Sam did a pretty good job. Uh, they, had, they got 100 men from Rhode Island, commanded by the good captain himself, and thus the Marine Corps was born at a tavern in Philadelphia on this date in 1775. First one in, last one's out. Speaking of the Marine Corps, 69 years ago today, that was dedicated, and that is huge. Uh, the memorial, the Iwo Jima Memorial, is officially the United States Marine Corps War Memorial, it was dedicated by Dwight David Eisenhower on the state in 1954. It's really big. It's at Arlington Ridge Park in Arlington County, Virginia. The size of the, that photo doesn't really give it justice to how big it really is. On June 2nd, 1961, President Kennedy signed a proclamation saying that the United States flag needs to fly over the memorial 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's one of the few official sites where this is actually required to happen. The flag can never be taken down at the Iwo Jima Memorial, which was dedicated on the state in 1954, and it's big. Happy birthday to Sesame Street. Sesame Street debuted on public television on November 10th, 1969. I was the perfect age for Sesame Street. I was five when it went on the air, and uh, I loved it. I love Sesame Street. Big fan of Grover. Grover was my favorite of all the Sesame Street characters. Uh, and Sesame Street, of course, became an American institution. Uh, it went over well almost everywhere except in Mississippi. The commission that ran public television in Mississippi said the viewers in Mississippi, especially the kids, is aimed at kids. You know, we can't be having an integrated cast and old people and young people and black and white kids hanging around together in a fictional urban neighborhood so they wouldn't air it. And then you know, there's a sizable outcry, as you might imagine, and eventually in 1970, Sesame Street made it on the air in Mississippi. Happy birthday, Sesame Street, 54 years old today. Love Grover. Grover was always my favorite of all of them. Oh, say, can you see? Yeah. Mm. 1975, November 10th, 1975, the 729-foot-long iron ore carrier, the Edmund Fitzgerald, sinks in a storm at Lake Superior, all 29 on board passed away. Here is a contemporary news account. An air and sea search is continuing for possible survivors of the Edmund Fitzgerald, a 729-foot ore carrier, which apparently broke apart and sunk last night on Lake Superior. The ship and its 29-man crew vanished in a storm with 80-mile-an-hour winds and wave heights up to 25 feet. All that has been found is an oil slick and some debris. You assume the ship has gone down. Is there now any hope for survivors at all? Well, it would seem very dim at this point, uh, with uh, almost uh, 24 hours that they've been in the, in the water, 50-degree uh, water, you don't normally survive much longer than three to four hours. The Edmund Fitzgerald meeting his fate with the 29 crew on board, all of them perishing 48 years ago today. And believe it or not, <clears throat> 40 years ago today, that debuted Windows. Bill Gates introduces Windows 1.0 to the world 40 years ago today. It was not well received, but very few people knew at the time this would be a game changer. I still use Windows 1.0 as my operating system on my home computer. Birthdays. Uh, two legendary actors, Richard Burton, was nominated for seven Academy Awards, seven Academy Awards, never won one. Uh, but he did okay by the late 1960s and the early 1970s. Richard Burton was the highest paid star in Hollywood. He commanded at least a million dollars a picture, plus profit sharing. He won other awards. He won BAFTAs and Golden Globes and Tony Awards and all kinds of good stuff. 
considered one of the greatest actors of his time. He just never won an Academy Award. Richard Burton, born on this date 98 years ago, died at the age of 58, 1984. And Chief Martin Brody from Jaws, the late Roy Scheider, of course, The French Connection and other movies as well. Roy Scheider, born in the state 1932. 31 minutes after the hour. If you missed the uh, conversation I had with Dory Foster after they rolled out the Building What Matters campaign, we're going to air that for you again. We want a new Wenatchee Valley YMCA. They deserve better than the facilities that they have. The process is in motion, but the fundraising continues. Dory will tell you about that. Special thanks to Alpine Air, one of our platinum sponsors. That's cool. Alpine Air, we love you. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. An opinion from Mike Mad Dog Minotti is next. You're watching the Friday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You'll find it at Save Full service at a low, low price. Crystal's Intimate Lounge in downtown Leavenworth is a wonderful place to enjoy mouth-watering appetizers and drinks while socializing, watching sports, playing bingo, pole tabs, or simply relaxing while enjoying the breathtaking mountain views. Crystal's family-friendly restaurant has a warm environment to enhance your dining experience, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Crystal's restaurant, lounge, and event space is located two blocks west of downtown Leavenworth on Highway 2. In today's environment, risk management assessment is a crucial process for your business. Risk assessment will identify, evaluate, and mitigate hazards. Don't let risk impact your business income, reputation, operations, and your overall success. We can give you peace of mind by transferring your business risks to the insurance providers. Call Stacy at August Edge Insurance today to schedule a risk management assessment for your business. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Guten Samir das Problem Saga. Meinen Zylinder überschwingen. Flute. Ich habe meinen Flug in Velo. Keine Sorge. Global Car Care. We speak your car's language. Fragen schlüssen. Hey, you. Well, I got a leaky transmission. My head gasket's shot. And I can use some new brake pads. That dog don't hunt. Global Car Care. We speak your car or truck's language. Need a break from reality? Central Washington Water has a showroom full of possibilities. Ask about a salt water system for a more natural approach to water care. They use less chemicals and have less maintenance. Free flow plug and play spas make it simple and affordable to get you soaking. At Central Washington Water, there's a hot tub for every space and every budget. Central Washington Water, your water care professionals. Mad Dog Magnati and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I've seen a lot of social media posts and I've heard people say, Jesus is the same today and yesterday and forever. And basically saying that Christianity doesn't change due to societal or cultural changes. In other words, for example, what some of these folks are really saying is that Jesus has never liked gay people and he doesn't like them now. Well, I, mean, I agree that Jesus is the same and doesn't change, but what needs to change is any of these churchy attitudes that denies that God's grace and reconciliation are available to everyone regardless of who they are, even if some current evangelical folks don't like some of them. Uh, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, 
And that's my opinion. Badger Mountain Brewery is your cure for boredom. Jam Night Mondays. Trivia Wednesdays. Live Music Fridays. And Sunday Brunch. There's always something brewing at Badger Mountain. So come join the party. program we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. Over there. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands-on learning experience. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's Automotive Alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's Automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. Welcome back to the program when the iconic uh, Wenatchee Valley YMCA building in downtown Wenatchee at the intersection of Arondo and Chelan opened its doors for business. William Howard Taft was the president of the United States. <laughs> William Howard Taft, people. I'm gonna gild the obvious lily. We need a new headquarters, Wenatchee Valley YMCA. We've needed one for 50 years and that process has begun. They're calling it the Building What Matters campaign and here to talk about it. We love Dory Foster, and you will too. She is the CEO of uh, the YMCA. This has been this has been something that's been on your radar and the people, your predecessors, for 25, 30 years, hasn't it? Easily, maybe even before that. Yeah, uh, it was early on where we realized we need more space. We need to serve better. Accessibility has been always been an issue. It was originally built for a men's housing unit way back 113 years ago, so it's been adapted every which way, and we just can't do it any longer. Yeah, it's a simple. It's just it's out. It's out, it's outlived its usefulness. Mm -hmm. The building itself is unbelievably structurally sound, and yeah. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, regardless mm -hmm. of what they're going to end up with their new deal. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of funny. Ironically enough, this might have actually been expedited quicker if you hadn't been able to get the extra parking down the block by the police station. I mean, if that, if that lot didn't open up and mm -hmm. which freed up the parking problem, you may be in a new building right now, but oh, yeah. let's not, uh, you know, let, let's, let's take what we can. We're moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, when did the process of, wait a minute, the PUD is moving out to their new service center. It's gonna take a long time. Talk about the, the background of, of eventually saying this piece of property at the corner of Fifth and the Avenue might be just perfect for us. Talk about that. Yeah, so we, we didn't want to make mistakes uh, on this one, so we did a lot of data with a third party uh, developer that allowed us uh, to really explore and interview. We came up with options for our current facility, including leveling it and bringing it back up, um, but the community said we need you to stay in the downtown corridor and if Chelan PUD is moving out, this is a perfect opportunity because that could be a blight, right? So um, we had our eye focused on that since the moment they announced, I got in there and tore it and um, it was, I feel like it's a perfect spot and the community said it is, so that's where we decided. Part of the job of the Chelan Douglas Regional Port District is to drive the economic engine 
-hmm. of the Wenatchee Valley. They stepped in as a partner to help you expedite this whole thing. Talk about this three-way marriage, if you will, between your organization, Dan Frazier, and the fine folks at the Chelan PUD mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. Chelan Douglas Regional Port Authority. How does that all work together? Yeah, so early on the PUD uh, asked the port to look at master developers and uh, there were nine or ten at one point that were interested. We met with all of them. They were all willing to donate the land to the Y. Um, at the end of the day, it w didn't look like it was going to pan out, as you well know. And when the PUD made the announcement that they were going to be the developers, we thought, well, we're not going to get the land donated any longer, but this is, might be a better opportunity and sure has proven to be that way. Um, we have had donors that have stepped up and allowed us to look at our future, so we have an expanded site now so much more than we would have gotten with a master developer. And it's amazing that the actual members of the YMCA have stuck with it for so long, despite the fact that it's such an outdated building. But they're, they're, they love the organization. They love what they do for the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you would think with a building that's 114 years old that you would be losing members. You're not. If anything, you're, you're right. bulging at the seams. Yeah, and it's, you know, I love our legacy. I call them legacy members because they've been there. They, sure. you know, they grew up at the Y, they learned to swim at the Y, they did every, you know, they helped us in volunteering and, um, but there's, there are some members that have been there for 60 years, 70 years, right, and never miss a day. They still don't. <laughs> Thursday, uh, October 19th, they had a get together at the local televents at the Pivas Public Market and you rolled out the campaign, you're calling it Building What Matters. Mm -hmm. It was a packed house. Mm -hmm. It went well. It did. You got a little momentum going here. Talk, yes. talk a little bit about what happened on Thursday the 19th. Yeah, so up until this point, it's been the quiet phase of the campaign, just having one-on-one -on -one conversations. So last night, we showed everyone in the community what we've been working on, the schematic design, the reasons, the whys, the hows, the whats, all of it, uh, including the cost, right? Because everything comes at a cost, and as a nonprofit, we are fundraising for all of it. Uh, it's a $25 million campaign, so we announced to the community what we were doing and asked for them to support us. Yeah, it's going to run you $25 million to buy the property, build it, develop it, all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. You're $11 million so far into the kitty at this right. point. At what point can you say, okay, we're going to make this happen, let's break ground? Is there... Is that even, is that pie in the sky thinking right now or do you have to have the 30 million in the bank before you can do anything? We don't have to have the 30 million in the bank because a lot of the funding will come in after the fact. So state funding, federal funding, federal funding won't be for seven years if we do get selected for new market tax credits. State funding is all reimbursable. Um, so no, we don't have to. The plan is to close on the property before the 31st of March start demolition uh, for the back side of the property and have a new Y by 2025, fall 2025. You brought a video with you that you showed on Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, the 19th. This is about uh, 70, 80 seconds long. Uh, Dory is gonna narrate as we show the video. I'm gonna ask you to use the monitor here in mm -hmm. our television studio. You folks at home, please use your televisions uh, if you don't mind. Let's roll the tape and Dory walk us through this. Sure, so some of the, the design principles are inclusivity, expandability, flexibility, and what is unique to Wenatchee, and you can see a downtown Y with outdoor communal space is gonna be key. You're looking at the aquatic center, a drop-off zone, parents told us they wanted to see their kids checking in, their older kids checking into the Y and not have to leave their car. We're looking at the community room now, which is outdoor space. There will be great outdoor breakout space and then into our child watching kids zone. So that's a service where we watch your littles for you while the parents are taking care of themselves and the rest of the facility. So outdoor play space for the kids is going to be amazing. I'm excited for that one because we don't get to keep them in, or we have to keep them inside right now. So as we're walking into the Y, you can see the aquatic center to your right. It is a two-story facility with the aquatic center, gymnasium, community spaces and program spaces on the first floor. But on a centrally hubbed location, we can see all points. There's not one place in this Y where you can't see somewhere else, if not out also outside. So you can see the aquatic center there. <clears throat> and to the right, uh, left rather, of the welcome desk is our community room, my favorite room. You can see the teaching kitchen is on the right there to that woman standing there, and then the breakout space. Um, this will be rentable, this will be usable for our members. I see great things happening in this space. 
To the right of the welcome desk is, you can see straight ahead is our rec center and then the hallway to our child watching kids zone. Again, we're watching your kids while the parents are in the building. Um, this is crawling through elementary school. Wow. Yeah. And an outdoor play area. Can't do that downtown, can you? <laughs> no, not in our current facility. But the other game changer is this universal locker room. We heard from many people in the community, disabled community, so there are four fully handicap accessible locker rooms and changing areas for people that just need, like dads taking their daughters in for swim lessons. But one of these rooms will be fully adaptable for a lift um, uh, and a uh, uh, adult changing area. Aquatic Center is the game changer of this com for this community. We have two pools, one warmer, one colder, lap swimming, there's a ramp there to the warmer pool, um, swim lessons, aqua therapy, lap swimming, water lilies, aqua exercise. Our game changer will be we want to prevent drowning, youth drowning in this valley, and we can do that with this Aquatic Center. And it opens up for many more programs because although the pool at the current why is an indoor year-round pool. It's basically the size of a large bathtub. Yes. <laughs> and it is constantly being used, constantly. Yeah. This allows you with a couple of different pools to have different uh, swimming and aquatic activities going on at the same time, which you can't do right now. No, we can't. Yeah, and you know, this walking track is gonna get used. We have five seasons with the smoke season, so we know this will <laughs> get used. And imagine yourself in an early morning yoga class in this group exercise studio. And then the gymnasium that you'll see soon is uh, full basketball size, not half the court that we have, uh, which means it's two youth basketball courts, three pickleball, one volleyball, two badminton, futsal, the whole shebang. We are excited. And some of the inclusive design on this is uh, colorblind accessible lines on wow. the courts, right? High contrast. You see the walking track was bright, bright blue. That's because people need to be able to see that. Visually impaired can see small amounts and they rely on high contrast. So we're excited to be a part of that. Nothing in the old building is works anymore. It just doesn't. The stairways are narrow. Uh, it, it's, uh, there are racquetball courts and nobody really plays racquetball much anymore. That no. takes up much needed mm -hmm. square footage. You've, you've done the best you can as you've expanded and gone left, right, and but you're done. It just doesn't work anymore. No, it doesn't. It's as simple as that. It really is. And, and it was probably antiquated to your point earlier about 30, 40 years ago, right? What's it like working with a blank slate? Okay, this is, <laughs> we have a hunk of property. The old building is going away and we get to do basically whatever whatever we want to do yeah. within reason. Yeah. It's a, that's that must be like sugar on the ice cream. It is really exciting for me personally. I've been in the Y movement for 23 years, but you know there is otherwise before us that have done this, been there. We have done so much learning from them. And COVID has changed the the scope of work a little bit, right? We, we're seeing that in the new, not necessarily the new designs, as much as how people are using the Y. And uh, our demographics have shifted since COVID, and this facility will help facilitate all of that. The fact that we are not serving our community, you know, we say we profess to uh, serve all, we are not serving the disabled populations. So the three steps, sets of stairs that you have to get, in, use, get through to get to the Y, yeah, mm -hmm. unreasonable. And of course, the cost of maintaining a building that old, heating and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's get let's get this baby going. Let's build what matters. Before we do the big ask, and I'll do it if you want me to, Dory. I don't care. I love sure. the why. <laughs> One more thing: the location can't be. You can't ask for a better location. No. I mean, you're you're just what two and a half, three blocks from the riverfront. Yes. You're still in downtown. Mm -hmm. All the parking in the world. The location is like come to us. Yes, absolutely. We, you know, this is really a generational decision and a legacy project. There is no other place we could have gone if the PUD didn't move. And we knew that early on that we were a little concerned with the downtown quarter with the PUD employees leaving. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, we're going to have more employees where the, the traffic going there will be more than what it was to to the PUD. So I hope the downtown corridor is happy. I hope the city's happy. And I'm confident that our old building will serve a secondary purpose and uh, will ha still have life in it. 
Mayor Frank Koontz is on board of uh, City of Wenatchee, Jerry Lee Crawford from the City of East Wenatchee. Your, uh, your chairman of the fundraising uh, committee is Rufus Woods, an iconic figure in this, uh, in this town. You have a short little video from Rufus. Can we show that? We do. Please do, yeah. Let's, uh, let's show the video right now. Hi, I'm Rufus Woods, uh, retired Win uh, publisher of the Wenatchee World. My family's been involved with the YMCA since it was founded. This whole building has served great for a lot of years, but it can no it's no longer serving the community. So, uh, I mean, it's got a very small gym, it's got a small pool, it's a lot of stairs, so it's not very accessible. So we're talking about building a brand new state-of-the-art YMCA down at the 5th Street campus of the PUD. YMCA is a foundational part of our community. It's the glue that holds our community together. So I want it to be relevant for kids and families for the next 100 years. So that's why I'm investing in it. That's why I'm asking other people to support this campaign. Where do we go from here, Dory? What can we, as the general public in the Wenatchee Valley, and this is the Wenatchee Valley's YMCA, that's what it's called, where do we go from here? How do we help you out? How do we make this, make this dream come true? I appreciate that. So we have, we have quite a bit of a delta to close um, on the public side of the, or the private donations, about $5 million. We have a five-year pledge period, and right now we have a $900,000 match on the table for anybody giving between now and Thanksgiving to be able to support us. So I want, I asked uh, the other night, think of a number that you want to donate to the Y, and then I want you to take that times five and put that every year for the next five years, and that is the legacy that can be brought to this community through individual donations. You may not even been inside the Wenatchee Valley YMCA building, but I'm telling you, these folks do incredible work. It's everybody's YMCA, there's no question about it. And keep in mind, for the kids, they take care of a lot of kids around here who need taken care of. Nobody's turned away, turned away from the Y because they can't afford it. Nobody is. If the kid needs a uh, helping hand, you, that's what you guys are there for. It's your mission. That's our mission. That's our promise. Yeah. That is our guarantee. And most people don't know that we serve over 440 kids a day in our licensed child care facilities that aren't in our YMCA. There are seven locations and three school districts, and um, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what we can do. Let's do it happen, folks. It's Building What Matters. The campaign is underway in earnest, and I know because I talked to Ernest, and he's on board, too. Dory, uh, let's, let's make this a regular thing. Maybe every three or four months, can you come Love back it. and visit me? Please. You have an open invitation, all right? Thank you. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley. We'll be right back. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Castle Rock International is the Northwest's premier real estate agency for large acreage properties, farms and ranch land, lodging and resorts, waterfront properties, and commercial real estate. Professional, knowledgeable, and discreet, award-winning Castle Rock International has the listings and the highly qualified buyers you have been looking for. Contact John McNamara at Castle Rock International today or visit their website for more information about this outstanding local company. Mount Stewart Physical Therapy is all new. New staff, new therapists, and a fabulous new chiropractor. That's right, you do not need to drive to Wenatchee or Cashmere for your care. Come see Dr. Zolman, D.C. No referral needed for most insurances. Open your auto and work injury claims with us or fax your post-op and Medicare therapy prescriptions to us right here in town. We offer covered pelvic floor services. We are premium health care for the Upper Valley. Improve your quality of life today. Mount Stewart Integrative Therapy and Chiropractic. Well, looks like our surgery patient is feeling better today. Yep, I didn't need any oxy today. I thought I'd do a little surgery on the drain. Huh. Do you need your pain pills anymore? No. Nah. Well, we should get them out of the house. They're places to drop them off. Yeah, okay. Actually, I can do that right now. And I will look at the drain. 
Prevent opioid misuse. Find safe medication return options near you at med-project.org. All right, getting ready to get our weekend going. Hope you have a good weekend. Wherever you go this weekend, of course, you can take us along. We're portable. We stream. Whatever's being broadcast over the air on your local cable provider is also streaming in real time at ncwlife.com. So take us along this weekend because we're portable. We have a little bit of time, so we thought we'd do one more little zip zoo around uh, north central Washington and the Wenatchee Valley. I'm thinking, is that McNeil Canyon? That is, that, uh, not long ago, it wasn't looking quite like that. Normally, you would see Lake Chelan. Right now, you see a bunch of clouds. Maybe we should change the name to Wake Up Gig Harbor. I'm not sure. Maybe Hay Canyon will give us a different view. There we go. Good morning, Cashmere. Boy, the, ca the camera that we used this morning on Cashmere, right, right at sunrise, it's just beautiful. Just spectacular. Hello, Cashmere. It is good to see you and the Wenatchee River. And uh, everybody's looking good there in Cashmere. Let's uh, head on out to uh, <coughs> Lake Antiad on the Turtle Rock camera. Looking back down towards uh, the Wenatchee Valley, it is calm and clean and cool on Lake Antioch. Good morning to our friends behind Rock Island Dam, looking back towards the Wenatchee Valley. Of course, you can see Turtle Rock. It has its name, Turtle Rock, because it looks like a giant rock. And finally, Slide Ridge, one of our newer cameras. Cool. That is really sweet. Somewhere down there is Manson and Roses Lake and and uh, Wapato Point, Lake Chelan, but that's up above Slide Ridge. It's on the south shore of Lake Chelan, way up there. That's why you can still see the snow. Looks like Lake Chelan has socked in a little bit. Not so much down here in the Wenatchee Valley. In fact, uh, we're waiting for quite a bit of sunshine today. My guess is those cool clouds and fog that you see up in the Lake Chelan area will be burning off in the not too distant future. Some really good shots this morning from our uh, PTZ cameras. We're gonna take one more break and do that forecast and send you on your way. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. This is the time of year we celebrate family, traditions, and great food. At Abby's, our legendary pizzas are so giant that they feed up to six happy family members. When you need a break from cooking, think Abby's, our place or your place. Our family is here for your family. What makes Abby's Triple Topper so great? Canadian bacon, pepperoni, ground beef. With these premium toppings piled to the edge, it's a whole lot of pizza on sale for a very special price. Order your Triple Topper now at abbys.com. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. What's the weather going to be like uh, this weekend for the Wenatchee Valley? Tomorrow, of course, is Veterans Day. Oh, yeah, it reminds me, there's no school today, by the way. Uh, federal offices are closed. Governmental offices are closed. They're observing Veterans Day today, even though the holiday isn't until tomorrow. First things first, it's going to be very windy. A wind advisory will last for 12 hours, 7 a.m. tomorrow, till 7 o'clock tomorrow night. It's going to be windy all over the Pacific Northwest, but some locations will see some pretty strong winds. These are your gusts, your peak wind gusts, and that will be Saturday in the late afternoon hour, so it is going to be very blustery indeed. It's going to be windy all day tomorrow, but especially tomorrow afternoon, so heads up, get ready for some unsettled and windy weather tomorrow. And by the way, winter travel conditions, likely in the Cascades uh, tonight and into Saturday, just a heads up there. In the meantime, closer to home, lots of sunshine for the most part today, pretty calm, pretty benign and about 48 for the afternoon high. Chance of rain picks up to about 40% tonight. Uh, we'll dip down to about 36. And then for the holiday proper, it's going to be a blustery and stormy Veterans Day. It's gonna be mild, temperature above normal, but rain and wind and sun. We get it all tomorrow in a high of 52 and then pretty quiet on Sunday. Have a good weekend. We will see you Monday morning, I hope. Till then, bye-bye.